You've heard the stories. Many Americans know so little about civics, they would have a hard time passing the test given to U.S. citizens. Well, there's a new tool designed to address that problem. It addresses civics fundamentals. And here to explain for us how it works is Dean Graziano. He is Vice President of Education at isit.org. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Before we get into this new program that tackles civics fundamentals, isit.org, I-Z-Z-I-T.org, what is that? Well, for over 15 years, we're a nonprofit, and for 15 years, we've produced really top shelf, top quality educator materials for free. And what's great about that is uh, anyone can access it. As we move forward in the world we're in, uh, we really cater for the certified teacher and now the family educator. Uh, people that are thrust at home actually teaching their children, nieces, nephews, etc. Um, our goal is to make sure that anyone, anywhere, anytime can access our materials. And what types of materials are, are we talking about? Multi-subject, multi-level. Uh, the sweet spot really is high school, so I would say a lot of our materials are focused for the 9 through 12. However, we do really now go back 7th, 8th, and 9th. And we even have materials for elementary students, our Pups of Liberty series, et cetera, that really can go down all the way for kindergarten, all the way through fifth grade. And so one of your latest projects now deals with civics fundamentals. I understand it's called Correct. Civics Fundamentals. You find it at civicsfundamentals.org. Correct. Uh, civicsfundamentals.org came about. We're very fortunate because part of this constitutional series, one of our resources, um, Justice um, Judge Ginsburg actually um, had done that series. And it was just a logical progression for him to be involved and really get into the, wow, I didn't know the statistics about students and, and people not knowing really civics fundamentals. Um, a statistic that came out, as you kind of alluded to, two out of three um, Americans can't pass the citizenship test. The 100 questions our government deems are important enough for everyone to know. So rather than just say, let's do something the same old, same old, um, Judge Ginsburg actually recorded 100, the 100 uh, questions, and did them to two minute videos. So well beyond that rote memorization, people can actually get the why. How many amendments are there? There's 27. Great answer, but why? Why is there such a challenge to do that? Because there's a reason why it's hard to make a change to the Constitution. So the civics fundamentals is just that. It really covers the fundamental questions that um, are deemed necessary to really have an understanding of civics. You mentioned Judge Ginsburg. We're talking about Judge Douglas Ginsburg. Correct, yes. Who, long time on the uh, U.S. Court of Appeals. In Washington. Uh, at one point was even a nominee mm -hmm. uh, to be on the U.S. Supreme Court. Really an expert on these issues. Uh, that has to be good to have someone of that stature as part of this. Absolutely. Um, again, I've been fortunate enough, I did an interview for the National Councils of the Social Studies with uh, Judge Ginsburg. And as soon as his name's mentioned, you could just see the chat box lighting up like, wow, and this is great, and what else is coming? Um, so not only is there the credibility, but having a law background myself, it's really great to have um, someone that isn't just kind of talking about civics, but is very passionate about making sure everyone understands it. And he does it in such a great and gentle way. It's kind of like, what's the next one about? What's the next one about? So it's very exciting. You mentioned that he did videos on all of these questions that mm -hmm. are part of the citizenship test. Uh, and it sounds as if they're kind of short, digestible discussions of these important topics. How is that better than just saying, here's the question, here's the answer, learn it? Well, it's a, it, it's a great point. Um, if you're looking at the student, for example, there are several. We could have the high school student that, for example, in New Hampshire, where I'm from, you have that as a requirement. You have to pass a half credit of civics. And we're lucky because this program is now accredited in New Hampshire to give, we're allowed, is it, is allowed to give credit uh, for students that want to take um, uh, the civics fundamentals. But what that happens is a student isn't just getting the answer, they're understanding it. So this could become a turnkey civics program. In and of itself, you could also have a naturalization, someone who's looking to become a U.S. citizen. The answer is the answer, and I'm going to study that. But there are so many different paths in which the answer in and of itself goes beyond just that simple answer. It's the why. So as an educator, I can step, step back and say to my student, okay, I want you to, to take a look at this. And rather than just get that simple rote memorization, why is that the reason? It really makes this, if you want to think about it, a student-driven uh, civics program. In preparation for this interview, I watched one of the videos okay. that you have on the website, and it dealt with the issue of 
what are the two parts of Congress, mm -hmm. and you learn uh, that it's the U.S. House of Representatives and the U.S. Senate, okay. but it's not just that. You learn why, and I, it, it's very interesting. Take us through, if not that particular example, what do the videos typically say? They, they don't just have the answer. They tell mm -hmm. you a little bit about the why. There, it looks like there's some a video of the founders discussing Great. these things and other things. Well, it's funny that you picked that out because that's, that's actually Judge Ginsburg's favorite slide as well. I think it's number 18. Um, what's great about that slide in particular is students that are learning the process, they'll see that there's a House representative based on population. They'll see a Senate, and that's the power. Everyone is equal. In that actual video, you'll see how there was the Great Compromise there's reference to, and when you're watching that, you'll see supplemental materials. So a student or an educator who wants to delve deeper can actually say, okay, how did that great compromise, Roger Sherman out of Connecticut talked about this. So it takes that one simple answer of two houses by Carol, and it actually goes further and explains. This can be kind of implemented or infused in a social studies program, a civics class in and of itself, or just someone that just wants to know the, the extra answer. So I think if you watch every video, the hundred, that's what it'll do for you. It gives you the answer, but it also takes you a little bit further to say, oh, I didn't know that, or I remember that now, or more importantly, where can I get more information? What can I know more about that? And I think it satisfies that, that kind of thirst to say, what's next, what's more? And there are students that really do demand it, as well as the teachers. One of the things I enjoyed most about that video was the fact that he said, Did, would you have guessed that one of the reasons we have the two branches in the Congress was so that it was harder to, to pass, pass a law. Yeah. I mean, some people might not have even thought of that, that that was designed to help uh, ensure that bad laws didn't get passed and okay. that might uh, uh, cause some, cause some uh, people to think twice about what our Congress is really supposed to do. Correct. When you look at some of the other issues that are discussed in, in here, uh, what are some of your favorites that you, that you like? Well, again, while it's civics, Something that, as I was researching and looking at the question types, um, another, I think, skill is the geography. And the citizenship test actually requires you to have, I think there are seven questions on geography. And what ends up happening from that is, is that part of citizenship? Well, it gives you some parameters. What are the states that border Canada, um, that border Mexico? And I think if you're a student that's out in New Hampshire, you know you border Canada. But what are those that, that border, if you will, Mexico, the oceans and stuff? I think geography is a missing link as well, and it very gently puts that through. Those are exciting for me because it's, it's the social studies realm. But for civics-wise, you're understanding our country. I think that's pretty important. That's one I, I, really, I really like a lot. Um, the other one is some of the symbols. Um, you know, I'll have students in the past, like in eighth grade, why are there 50 stars and 13 stripes? And it actually illustrates why that's there, the 13 original colonies of the 50 states. So those are great. The other one that I think starts off is rule of law, right? That's, that's, that's the basis. And that one question touches upon five others. So if you were looking at rule of law, it actually hits like question two, question three, 41, 42, et cetera. And what I like about that is there's so many supplemental materials that are tied, as I mentioned, to that question that students can get a really great knowledge just from the one video, they can go further. And what is rule of law? And why is that so important? Why is that the basis for everything? So those are my favorites. Um, I will say I love them all. I mean, I'm not just saying that. Um, I think they're really well done. I like how we have the extra footage. So when you're talking about World War II, for example, and you'll actually see Pearl Harbor, for example, um, the student sees some really great footage. Um, it's really well done, and it's something that we had focus groups, and we had students and educators take a look at what, what's good, what's not good, how does it work. And what's great is it's a culmination of a lot of people giving some great input to make these um, as pleasurable, entertaining, and informative as possible. And from a larger perspective, when people watch these videos, what do you hope they're going to ultimately get out of seeing these videos? Well, a couple things. One, I hope if they didn't remember or know, I hope it's the aha moment. I think when I show some of my friends who weren't history majors, um, they're like, oh yeah, they might get like an 80 out of, out of the 100. And what I want to see is they're like, oh my gosh, I remember that. Or that really is important. Or more importantly, wow, I just learned something and it wasn't hurtful. It didn't harm me. It wasn't the, oh wow, I've learned something. Um, they actually enjoyed the learning process. And for me, what I want out of it is I want to impact as much student learning, whether that's the student 
or the parent that's just looking at it and they're learning something, they're a student, that's what I want to see out of this. I want people to become more aware of what our government does, how it acts, and, and what it's for, um, that the power lies with the people. I think that's something that I, I really hope they get out of it. If people want to learn more, what's the best thing for them to do? Just go to civicsfundamentals.org. Um, registration, everything is free. So I think that's probably where I would start. Um, the second is what's unique is because this is a project for isit.org, we have someone in-house at isit.org. You can go to the website, you'll see the customer service. We have someone there from 8 in the morning to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard. Any question, any thought, how do I get it? How do I run it? How do I make this work for me? We'll be able to answer that for you. So civicsfundamentals.org is the specific program. Mm -hmm. Isit.org, I-Z-Z-I-T.org. Dean Graziano is Vice President of Education at isit.org. Thanks so much. Thank you very much for having me. And we thank you for watching on Carolina Journal.